welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ, the podcast. I believe that the best coach you can ever have is that one person that is staring straight back at you every morning in the mirror, you. Join me in discovering some key strategies so that you can create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs. Your journey to being your own best coach starts right now. Welcome back to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today we're going to be talking about the power of the word no. Now one of the most shortest words in the dictionary, yet one of the most powerful is the word no. I love this quote from Bill Crawford who says, One key to successful relationships is learning to say no without guilt so that you can say yes without resentment. I'll say that again. One key to successful relationships is learning to say no without guilt so that you can say yes without resentment. Now, have you ever done that? Have you ever said no and felt guilty? Have you ever said yes and then resented it? I know I have. And for us to be able to step in our power and be able to say no when we mean no, whether it be a behavior that we don't like, whether it be a task that someone wants to to give us, whether it's someone wants us to do something for them, for us to powerfully say no and mean it and not feel any guilt is a powerful, powerful thing. And I know there's been situations in my life when I've said yes and I've meant no and it doesn't feel great. And there's been situations, even dangerous situations that I've accepted and not said no, and stood in my power. Now, I remember when I was a young girl, I would have been probably six years of age, and my mum and I were in Maya, and we were shopping. I remember what we were shopping for. We were shopping for a fry pan, and we're in Maya, and as mum and I were shopping, I looked around, and I had this feeling there was this man that was hanging around, I still remember what he looked like. He was a shortish type man. He had baggy, long pants, all sort of natural sort of colours. And he would have been about in his late 50s. And he kept staring at me. And I remember feeling this awful sensation in my stomach. And I didn't say anything to my mum, but I kept watching this man. Now, this man kept hanging around and as we were going in and out of the aisles. He came close as soon as he had an opportunity where my mum was a little bit further away and was distracted looking at something. He then moved past me and brushed up against me. And I remember feeling my face, my face just got hot and I felt really uncomfortable and scared. And at the same time, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything to my mum and I didn't say anything to him. And I remember that awful feeling. And still to today, my mum's 92 years of age and she doesn't know the story. And it's so powerful enough for me to remember it at, I'm 51 years of age now, and I'm still remembering that moment because I had this shame or guilt that I didn't say anything. Uh, And and I, I know the power of being able to stand in your power and say, no, this behavior is not right. And so the more we can do that, the better. Because each time you say yes to something, whether it be a task that someone has asked you to do, whether it's something they want you to do, you are saying no to something else. Every time you say yes to something, You say no to something else. And I know that if I asked a question for you guys listening on the call, if I said to you who he hasn't got enough time in your day, 
I know that most of you would be nodding your head or putting your hand up and saying, that's me, I haven't got enough time in my day. And if I asked you, who here doesn't like conflict or doesn't like to ruffle feathers? And most of you would be nodding and putting your hand up and saying, that's me, I, I don't want conflict. And if I ask the question, who has a, a big need to be liked and is a bit of a people pleaser? I know that some of you would be putting up your hand and nodding and saying, well, that's me because I like to be liked. Now, all of those things, it's so important, the word no. Because you can either schedule your life with your own vision or become part of someone else's schedule. <laughs> and that's with everything. So if someone asks you, it's even your day-to-day -day things that you do. If you get an email coming through, have you, have you got a clear vision of your life to know when do I address this email? When do I pick up the phone? And when do I not pick up the phone? What are the boundaries that I have? What's the pre precedence I set for people that work with me or deal with me? What are the boundaries and rules that I have around my time and what I do and don't do because you're either scheduling your life with your own vision or becoming part of someone else's schedule. Now, what I've seen as I've been coaching you know, thousands of people now, that there is a, a correlation, a link between people that are not stepping into their power to say no and also not taking opportunities due to the fear of someone else saying no to them. There's a real link. And if you look at it, it's, it's based around rejection, being rejected in some way, a feeling of not belonging or not being liked or loved by others. And also it's connected to your self-worth. And if you think you are enough, and yourself, if you are saying to yourself, I am enough, I am worthy, I am loved, then you are able to step into your power and say no when you need to. And saying things like, I care for myself enough to say no when I need to. And if someone says no to me, I am still worthy and I am still enough. Because often we make it mean if someone's saying no to us that that means that we're not worthy or we're not enough. And it's so important that we be our own best coach. We must respect, care and be our own best friend. And so by doing that, we need to make sure that we're stepping into our power of our voice. So stepping into our power we also need a clear vision of our lives to know exactly what we want and be able to set boundaries accordingly to that. For us to have a vision, what is our vision? Where do we want to go in our life? What are the boundaries? What are the rules that we're going to set around that? And then stepping into your power. So your vision, it's really important to know what is it that you want in your life from business, your business, your family, your health, all of the areas of your life. What is a plan that you have for that? What is your vision? Where do you want to be in 12 months time? Where do you want to be in two years, 10 years, 20 years time? Now this will dictate your boundaries because if you're spending more time or saying yes to other things that aren't serving your vision, then you are not going into the path or the direction of your vision, you're going off course. So you first need to know what is your vision? What is it that you want in your life? And then define those boundaries around that. What rules have you got around where the path that you want to go in your vision? So for instance, with my life with my family life one of the things that I do not do is I don't do coaching on weekends so other than if I've got a live event that I'm doing other than that I do not coach people on a Saturday and Sunday now some of you might be going that's crazy JJ because you could be getting more clients you could be helping more people and I and I get that but that's my rule that's my boundary 
because for me, my weekends, most of the time, other than when I'm doing my live events that I've scheduled throughout the year, is with my family. So that's one of the rules that I have, which then links into my vision of what my family life is going to be in two years, five years, 10 years time. So my boundaries are set. I do not go cross those boundaries. And by stepping into your power, it's, but saying no can be challenging because we've got to build the muscle. We've got, the, we've got to build that muscle of saying no. So for you to build that muscle to say no, there's some different strategies that you can do. And I want to talk to you about a couple of those that could help you. But one of them is having a power statement, something that you can say to people straight away if they're asking you for something and you want to say no. Now, one of those statements, and you've got to come up with your own that feels right for you and practice that statement. It could be that someone asks you something and you say, that doesn't work for me. That doesn't work for me. So if someone says, oh, can I have a coaching session tomorrow, JJ, at 10 a.m.? No, that doesn't work for me. So it's a, a clear, it doesn't work for me. Now, again, I don't need to give the whole explanation of why it doesn't work for me. This is my sentence. That does not work for me. And so I want you to come up with, if you're building the muscle on the saying no, then come up with what statement is right for you and practice it. Practice it out loud. If you can't language it, you can't have it. So you need to feel it in your body, say it out loud, say it with conviction, say it with strength, with your shoulders back, get your whole body in it and say it strongly. That doesn't work for me or whatever statement that you have. Now, the other strategy you could use is time out. So this can be a breather. So if someone puts you on the spot and says, oh, can, can you lend me some money? And your answer you want to say is no, but you're feeling uncomfortable in the situation. You might want to say something like to give you time out, to give you some time to breathe. You could say something like, I need to get back to you on that. So I need to get back to you on that or some time out could be, can we just hold this conversation for a sec? I just need to step out for a moment. I'll be back in five minutes. And then you step away wherever you go to the toilets and have a breather and think it through what you're going to say. If you're on the phone, you might say, I need to call you back. Can I call you back in regards to that? I need to go right now. Whatever Again, you've got to practice doing that, but that timeout gives you some breathing space for you to compose yourself and then think about what is the right decision for me to say? Is it yes? Is it no? If it's no, how am I going to say that? And prepare yourself for that. And again, when you're preparing yourself for that, say it out loud. Say what you're going to say out loud, which comes to my next one is role playing. Role playing you saying no in different ways. Now, what I like to do is think about the the stuff that you can easily say no to because there's stuff that all of us will say no straight away to. So if I said to you, do you want to drink this poison that's going to kill you? You would say no. Do you want to jump off that big bridge right now? No. Do you want to run down the street naked? No. Or some people would say yes, some crazy people. (laughs) But there's things that you would straight away without even hesitating say no. And the interesting thing is someone might say, can you lend me a million dollars? No. Now, it's interesting, isn't it? Because if someone says, can you lend me a million dollars? And you would, most people would say straight away, no. Maybe you haven't got a million dollars to give them. (laughs) Maybe you think a million dollars is completely out of your reach. So it's like, that's a ridiculous question. So it's a no. So imagine that link. If you're go- if someone's going to say to you, Lem, can you lend me a million dollars? And you easily say no. Like that's a ridiculous question. And you say it so quickly with conviction. What is the difference when someone asks you, can you lend me 50 bucks? <laughs> now, 
if you don't want to lend that $50 to somebody, again, that's something that you need to role play if it's not coming easy for you. So the role play can be really powerful by saying some statements, getting some different scenarios by like someone wants you to go out for dinner, but you don't want to go. Does someone want to ask to lend some money? Does some, so all different scenarios and coming up with different ways of answering no and saying it with conviction. And one thing that I really want to stress is that you don't necessarily have to give a massive big explanation for your no. I will often say no, that does not work for me. Now, I don't need to go into any detail of why it's not working for me. No, it is not working for me. So maybe there are times that you give a bigger explanation, but also if you can practice saying something of a statement where you don't have to give a big explanation, your decision is no, it's not right for you. It doesn't work for you. It won't fit in your schedule. So practicing that is really powerful. And the other thing that I would suggest, of course, is get a coach. If this is where you need to build the muscle around, we're talking about a simple, small word saying no, but how powerful is that word? That word no is either giving you more time or less time. That word no is either helping you on the path of your vision in all areas of your life, or it's taking you off the path of the areas of your life. That simple word no is either you stepping in your power or you shrinking and having resentment or shame or guilt and living with that every time you're saying yes and meaning no or whether you're saying no and meaning yes, whatever. So getting a coach is really important to help you build that muscle. The other thing I think is really important is not only saying no, but receiving the word no. What do you make that mean? Now, there's lots of situations like those of you that need to cold call your customers or if you're going for a job or you're asking for a sale. That word no can scare people so much. It's like this rejection. This person doesn't like me. This person doesn't want me. I'm not good enough. Is that what you're making it mean? Because what you make it mean is going to link into how you feel, your emotions. The story that you create in your head is absolutely linking to the emotions that you have around people saying no. Now, no can mean so many different things. It could mean one less no on my journey to yes, because the more people that say no right now, means that I, it's a numbers game. So that person said, no, 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 I'm sure a yes is coming. It could mean that. It could be, it's not, no, might be not now, but maybe later, because sometimes people will say no now, but then later on, it's right for them. So maybe it isn't a definite no, it's a no then, but maybe it's a not now no. Or maybe people need more information when they're saying no. Or maybe they're just not the right client. And so them saying no is a blessing for you because if you haven't got your ideal client that you're working with, I can tell you for me, I've had my non-ideal client that I've worked with in the past and it's been painful because if you're not with your ideal client, it's not that fun, it's not easy, it's, it's clunky. I know when I do my free events, you're the voice. And I have about 100 people in the room. And what happens is at lunchtime, it's a free event. So what can happen is at a free event, people are not all committed. They're not all in. And so I know at a free event that at lunchtime, a certain amount of people will go. I get excited with that because my ideal clients will leave at lunchtime. And that is my story. My story is that 
there will be a certain amount of people that are not my ideal client and I want them to leave at lunchtime because I would rather my ideal, amazing, go-getting clients that are really committed and wanting to create change in their life to stay in the room with me and it's okay for the ones that aren't a match for me to say no and leave. So your story that you create around the word no, people saying no to you is really, really powerful because someone saying no, whether it be a cold call, whether it be you going for a job, you're asking for the sale. If you're meaning, if you're making it mean rejection, then you're in for a lot of pain. And if you can build the muscle of not only saying no, but also receiving no, it means that not only you're stepping into your power and you're on your vision and your path to where you want to go because you're creating more time for what you need to do in your life. And you're also looking at more opportunities in your life because you're taking more opportunities because you're not scared of the word no. You guys listen to my podcast and I can tell you there's a lot of people that I have approached to come on my podcast and they say no. And then I have amazing people that I get so excited about and they say yes. But it takes me going to these people and approaching these people and going through some no's to get the yeses. And if I stopped at the first no, then I wouldn't have all these amazing people that I have interviews with because I would be preventing myself from then asking the next person if they want to come on this podcast or anything else in my business. So we stop our possibilities and opportunities by being scared of the word no. And the most successful people in the world have been told no so many times. And they still persist and they will persist in their vision and persist in their dream because they know that that no doesn't mean that they don't continue on with their dream. The word no might be small, but it is so mighty powerful. It sets our boundaries. It sets the path to your vision of your life, whether you're going towards that vision and you're not getting taken off the path, or whether you're seeing those possibilities by seeing that that word no that other people might give you isn't going to prevent you from asking someone else or even asking them again. I trust that this has been valuable for you. The simple word, small word, but powerful word, no. And I wanna finish with this quote by Paolo Collio, who says, when you say yes to others, make sure you are not saying no to yourself. Thanks, guys. See you on the next podcast. Thanks for tuning in to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and follow me on Instagram at JJ Speaker Coach. And remember to live with insatiable passion, create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs.